good evening well uh, we have just uh, arrived to a position where we have learned how to normalize our dynamical equations how to set up our dynamical equations how to obtain the linear dispersion relation by linearizing the equations so after learning all those things i thought that it would be better if i give you some examples from the very articles research articles that we have published and uh, excuse me if these things appear too much hectic for you because in most of the cases these are very simple that once you start practicing it will be very easy for you i am saying simple because i consider all of you are smart enough so let's get into one of our papers Now, this is an electron plasma wave and we have studied the modulation instability. Now, this part is a bit advanced and how the dispersion relation, the linear dispersion relation is obtained that is a bit different from the other ones. Now, let us start with our astrophysics and space science journal article. Now, in order to get this a bit bigger for you. You see, I have put here electron acoustic solitary wave structures in a relativistically degenerate quantum plasma with two temperature electrons. Now, from the title, you can understand that it is a plasma containing hot and cold electrons. At the same time, the electrons are of two categories. Both are at different temperatures. That means one is comparatively colder and another one is comparatively warmer. Now, this temperature that we are talking about is in terms of statistical electrons. Now, one electron is hot, one electron is cold. Don't get into this confusion. A distribution of particles which have an average energy mode are to be called warm electrons and the vice versa. Now, if it is visible to you, because I will be sending you all these articles for your own reference. Oh, come on. Now, let me analyze this paper one by one. Now, while starting with this paper, we will be dealing with the basic equations. Now, you see, let me zoom it a bit. Okay. Come on. Well, you see. This is the dynamical equations. Now, as I have said that there are hot and cold electrons and there are ions which are comparatively very heavy and they form the stationary background with charges zi as I put it here zi because suppose it is a uh, singly ionized ion positive charge. So, it is a zi is equal to 1. So, if there are a number of systems in which singly charged ions may be there, doubly charged ions may be there, positive, negative ions may be there, whatever. Now, coming to this question, you see there, as I have said that we have put a index J. What is J? J can be EH or EC, that is hot electron or cold electron. So, for this continuity equation, which is a generalized term, we have got two separate electrons. Now, in the same way, the momentum equation out here has got two terms and this is the Poisson's equation that you will be using very often. Now, come to these equations. These are unnormalized. You see, they have got Me, H cut, all these things are normalized. So, we have to get it normalized. But before that, what we find, let me clarify certain things. This one is the electrostatic potential. Electrostatic potential, this is, this P is the pressure. What is the pressure for an ideal gas type of molecule? Uh, ideal gas uh, approximation for a classical picture P can be nkt. This is the Clapeyron's equation. P is equal to nkt, where n is the number of mole, k is the Boltzmann constant, and t is the temperature. But since we are talking about this quantum range, because the paper, as you have seen, is in the quantum range, and we are using the quantum hydrodynamic equation, these are hydrodynamic equations because considering the electrons 
hot and cold are two electron fluids, hot electron fluid, cold electron fluids. Now this equation of pressure or we also call it equation of state varies depending upon the problem what we take, we take it as different combination. Now this is the stress tensor. Now what is this quantity? Some of you have asked me sir he, while I was doing those uh, assignments with you, you said that sir why did you ignore the third term? I didn't ignore the third term because that problem was not a quantum thing. That was a classical picture. So this velocity, this uh, term, third term on the momentum equation on the right hand side is known as the quantum diffraction term. It's also called a Bohm potential. Bohm, P-O-H-M is a potential that was uh, given by David Bohm. And I'll also put the paper in your article, uh, in your study material. Now, this is related to the density. And the Bohm potential is related to the quantum tunneling. Okay, you know tunneling, what is tunneling? To the tunneling. Now, this is the potential, uh, this is the phi is the potential and the Poisson's equation is, you see, this is the 4 pi e is in the unnormalized scale. So, if we have taken the another uh, SI system, then it would be different. Okay, now we are going to the normalization. But before that, let me clarify on the pressure. As you have seen, there was this pressure term in expression out here in second equation there would be therefore the expression for pressure. Now what I said expression of pressure is often known as the equation of state. So the equation of state this expression has been given by one of our physicists of Indian origin you know he got the Nobel Prize S. Chandrasekhar Subramaniam Chandrasekhar. He has given this expression for the jet phase suppose is the electron for a very dense mass the relativistic degeneracy pressure is given like this. Well, you know, pi is a constant, m is the electron mass, c is the speed of light, h and constant, and this is some algebraic and some hyperbolic function of r. Now, what is r? r is the ratio of the Fermi momentum by the mec, Fermi momentum, you know, Fermi scale. Mm, so, this will be given you, uh, given by the, this expression. And we have just made it simplified because you see nj to the power one third and I have taken all those things to be rj0 at equilibrium value. Now rj0 is this thing and uh, n0 as I have put here n0, n0 is defined like this. Now you see n0 is the density and how much it varies. It is very dense, you know, 10 to the power 29 per centimeter cube. Now if it is a per meter cube then get it transferred by some factor 10 to the power uh, 6 I hope. Okay. Now C is the speed of light. So for the simplified case there are two cases either ultra relativistic or weak relativistic. Now you see there are two cases. Why ultra relativistic? That means the relativistic degeneracy pressure is very high and such a high that you have to take into consideration of a different order term for a density. Now, when you will study a bit detail how about uh, how uh, Chandrasekhar came to derive that equation, that's not a part of this lecture and let's keep it. So, for a weakly relativistic degeneracy, you see Rj tends to 0. Rj as I have said out there, Rj is given, it tends to 0 and then it is taken in density to the power 5 third. Let me zoom it out more. Density to the power 5 third. Can you see it? Density to the power 5 third. Okay. Now it is for the weakly relativistic. Now anybody having any idea about how the ultra relativistic case? Well, this will be n to the power 4 third. Okay. And the uh, constant that is uh, on the on this side of the expression is a constant. So, these are the degeneracy terms. So, the pressure has been simplified. Now, 1 by n dp dx that you find in your equation of motion can be simplified like this. And after some normalization, as I said the other day, that normalization is what makes your labor, 
little. So you just be smart, normalize the equation. You can do the same problem with a normalized term. In such a case, you have to write so many things, you have to calculate those many things and on the way, you might miss some factors. So don't miss that factors, just get it normalized. Okay. Now, coming to these things, you see, I have got those things normalized. Here, Fj. Fj is through the pressure term while normalized by those mass of electron, blah, blah, potential, thermal energy, whatever. So, you see, we have got those expressions. And for the uh, Poisson's equation, we have also this term, uh, these three elements. Now, when we are talking about an electron acoustic mode, what happens? Let me cl clearly say you that in an electrostatic mode, there are two categories of electrons. Now, you see, one is hot electron, another one is cold electron. Now, hot electrons, they are very mobile. So, what do they do? Whenever there is a pressure fluctuation or field fluctuation, they just move around their mean position, starting to oscillate. So, when a particle Suppose a charged particle is displaced from its equilibrium point, the field on the others by the other particles will try to put it in its original position. So the particle is brought back to its original position. But due to this attraction, it will offshoot its equilibrium position and move on the left or right, whatever you call it, and start oscillating. But much like it. Suppose a particle is there which is charged and its equilibrium position, it is displaced and when it is just released from its uh, equilibrium position, it starts to oscillate about its equilibrium position, okay. So the hot electrons, they provide the restoring force, you know, restoring force, it just moves from its original position and start oscillating and therefore restoring force. Now let me clarify you, for a momentum equation, the right hand side, this equation is the restoring force term and this part is the inertia part. Let me go a step back then you can be able to understand. This is. Here it was Me, I just divided it with you. Had Me been multiplied with this thing, mass times some acceleration. So this is proportional to the inertia, you know, mass is a measure of inertia as we all know. Now coming to this thing, so this part will be called the inertia and this one will be the restoring force. This is the electrostatic force and this is the quantum force or quantum bomb potential or quantum diffraction, whatever you call it. Now, we are talking in the quantum regime, that's why those quantum terms come and the pressure is also quantum. Had it been in a classical range, then the bomb potential won't arrive there and the pressure would be some uh, thermal pressure kind of thing. Now, you see, you have just normalized those things. And those normalized and H is a non-dimensional quantum diffraction parameter defined by the ratio of two energies. Well, the ratio of two energies. Let me tell you. H cut omega AC, it is the energy associated with a plasmon. With a plasmon. <coughs> what is a plasmon? A plasmon is a quantum of plasma excitation. As you know, photon is some quantum of electromagnetic, this thing, electromagnetic uh, field. Um, some call it a phonon is for a vibrational field, a field. So, we call it a plasmon. Now, this is the energy associated with a plasmon divided by 2 kT FeH. Now, this factor 2, someone asked me how did it come? Well, you just check the original works of by Haas which I think is beyond the scope of this lecture, has Manfred you when they have included the uh, quantum hydrodynamic model in the quantum regime by taking those uh, moments of you know, uh, distribution function in the velocity space, they will get some constant like this. You see, delta is NEC0 by NH0, the equilibrium density is equal to hot electron. And it is the delta N is the ion, ion charge multiplied by the density by NEH0. Now, these are the equilibrium number of density cold electron, hot electron and ions. Now, from this, you can say that it has been normalized with hot electron density. Got it? The normalization, therefore, follows some strict rules. 
Now, you see, this one is unnormalized, hey, uh, normalized, and this are the unnormalized expressions. As I have said, the how we have just uh, divided it with the equilibrium density and the velocity with the sound speed of um, hot electrons. Sound speed, don't call it like that of what we call in our sound or acoustics chapter because since these are small frequencies we call it the acoustic mode it's the name don't go by the sound what we are hearing okay that's not the thing okay so these are the expressions and at equilibrium condition you will see that hot electron plus cold electron is equal to ion density and such an expression would come now when we go to this thing, well, this is the perturbation expansion. You see, there are five terms. J can be hot or cold. So, there are two, two, four, five. Five equations written in a compact form. I have to save the space because whenever you are writing a page, a paper, you have to just minimize on your typing things. The minimal Thing you put in the paper because they have got this publication charges and all these things or whatever it looks beautiful because if you fill it with so much of mathematics then no one will read it provided some uh, very int uh, interested person other rest of the people won't find it interesting because if you put too much of mathematics though there are a lot of mathematics out there but I consider this works little of mathematics more of physics now, as I have said that e to the power of kx minus omega t is a linearization term. As I have shown in the previous uh, lecture out there mm. and the assignment that I have given you, you will find that kx. So, what will be the del del t? Del del t will give rise to minus j omega or i omega here and d d del del x would give us i k. So, after forming those things set of equations there are five equations we have got those how many equations we said one two three four five how many variables did we have one two three four five so five equation five variables and it is solvable and we get an dispersion relation of this form now someone asked me a few times back that sir whether, whether uh, the dispersion relation can have some powers of omega to the power 4, yes, it can have, it can have, you see. It is FEH, FEC, when you take the, simplify it, you take the LCM, omega square, omega square becomes omega to the power 4 and the next one comes omega square and the same. Now, there are certain tricks, certain tricks in the sense, suppose I consider that it is an purely acoustic mode. Therefore, we will ignore the inertia corresponding to hot electrons. When it is hot, any age, then left hand side will be 0. And for cold electrons, this side will be there, inertia will be there and the right hand side, this uh, pressure term will be absent. So, you see, then omega would become very simplified because there won't come this expression corresponding to this expression omega square won't come and then this fourth this omega won't come somehow we will check it and then uh, we will get a omega square omega to the power 2 kind of dispersion relation with some term with kk now taking this into expression and i have done a bit long work laborious so we have got two modes you see the corresponding to and these are big things okay uh, writing all these things every time will be very terrible <laughs> just uh, simplify this so you have just taken it b c like this and combining you see omega 1 omega 2 now you see this thing must be less than b obviously it is less than b or else the square term will be negative which is not possible also, when you take these terms and when you find the density, a frequency, you have to just ignore the negative frequency. Mathematically, it is coming. 
but physically negative frequency it is meaningless. So, you get the linear dispersion relation. Now, if you ignore that thing as I have said ignore the inertia of the hot electrons and the restoring force of the cold electrons you see your omega as I have said will not come in terms of to the power 4 it will be only omega square and this will give you something simply and upon simplification will be something like this. Now, in the long wavelength limit, long wavelength means lambda is very high and k is approaching 0 and in such a case it is omega is somehow related to linear with k. Now, you see this linear approximation at long wavelength that is k tending to 0, this should approach to the speed of sound. So, the long wave phase speed would be something like phase velocity or phase speed we call it here it will be omega by k. Now, we have gone the dispersion relation out here. Now, we have to plot the dispersion relation with various parameters here R A 0 is a parameter, H is a parameter, there may be delta or the hot and cold electron initial equilibrium density variations may be the parameter. So, a lot of things are out here. So, so, this KDB part we will be doing in a later lecture. Now, similarly, let me check with these things linear and nonlinear, and what we have done, we have got that kind of thing. Here, we should, the pressure is different. Here, the pressure is different. This is the uh, one dimensional Fermi pressure, and uh, this is given to the power n, to the n cube. Okay. This May, these are polytropic processes and, and in such a case your um, in the power or exponent of the density varies. Correspondingly the dispersion relation well you see is the dispersion relation ok. So, we have just removed that normali after normalization what we just h k omega everything becomes dimensionless. But if you put in the dimensions once again just reverting back to our original thing you see omega you see omega is equal to plasma frequency omega square if I get omega square is equal to plasma frequency square plus some corresponding terms due to the Fermi pressure and the quantum diffraction term. So, the frequency gets changed. So, this is how the wave is having its dispersion characteristics, how it varies from one uh, problem to another problem. We will just check it and how it depends on this. Now, in another of our paper, well, this problem is a bit different. Here, we have taken uh, a different model corresponding to a let me well, well. Mm. best uh, I am highlighting it let me highlight well why can I not highlight it Where are those colors? Excuse me. Yeah. You can see based on the 3D equilibrium Fermi Dirac distribution for electrons, what they say that when the wave is propagating in one direction, there is a uh, there is a anisotropic temperature anisotropy in that direction, and with such a case the set of equations undergo some changes you see and when I send you the paper you can check it and this g comes g is a basically is the ratio of two poly logarithmic function what is a poly logarithmic function it is a log of log ok. So, you just check it in the internet what is a poly logarithmic function you see I have just written here poly logarithmic function and accordingly you will get the dispersion relation where is it? Well, now what are these omegas? A uh, gamma, gamma 3, gamma 2. 
because in this problem we have taken some uh, streaming value okay and considering the streaming value we have plotted the uh, relativistic things will come well that is a different thing from this matrix for supply you with some astrophysical data health and good isn't it for example, in case of Jupiter, whose density is 10 to the power 32 per meter cube, temperature of the order of 10 to the power 4 Kelvin, G has got this value. So, G has 4 value in a white dwarf. What is a white dwarf? White dwarf is a phase of a star. Okay. Check it. Astrophysics, plasma, astrophysics people, just check it. Okay. Now, this is one of our papers, which I just well, nothing to relate. This is a comparison. Well, <coughs> come here. Now you see, someone just said that sir, we are not considering the streaming of motion, well, streaming of particles. You see, we have got streaming here. And in such a streaming, what happens? The equation of motion undergoes some changes. You see, del and del t plus del del x n u was there now one gamma factor comes in what is gamma gamma is a relativistic streaming factor is equal to 1 by root over 1 minus v square by c square or u square by c square so that factor comes in these are the eulerian equations where the gamma factor relativistic streaming factor has been included okay and uh, well i should even here you see gamma j is equal to 1 minus u j square by c square to the power half okay so that factor and the you see the streaming values the has been included in the dispersion relation and how many roots can it have four roots because omega square omega square when these are different things because there is mu when we take these two things multiply it and while simplification it gives you omega to the power 4 so fast mode slow mode now when you take the equation uh, of streaming velocity in the expression is omega minus k u square when you square root that and put these things uh, on the right hand side you see oh i have just made a how did i no it is the first mode where this discriminant is plus and it is minus Omega minus K U0 was there, so K U0 comes on the right hand side. Okay, now I just want to change some. You see, here there were two particles, okay, mass of electron and mass of this thing. Now, while doing this ion, because hot electron and cold electron will have the same mass, but electron and ion have different mass. Now, while normalizing, you see, the charge of electron and ion are different. So, in that there was one Q in our normalized equation. Q was there. So, charge will be there. So, one will be plus and one will be minus depending upon how you normalize. And there was this mass term. It was, suppose uh, I normalize it with the mass of, mass of electron. So, mass of uh, electron upon uh, that is Me by Mi becomes this becomes mass of ion uh, electron by ion and this is the expression we have included it someone asked me a few times back you know sir uh, uh, if the masses uh, why are the masses not normalized they are normalized provided there are two different spaces for electron and ion for electron electron there is no such a uh, mass factor coming or electron positron no such mass factor okay now such are the differential equations we are doing now this is also an ion acoustic solitary structure well we will study about this later hmm. these are ion acoustic modes so all those things were electron acoustic modes and here ion acoustic well this is one of our papers in cambridge this is particle beams well i'll just give you an idea what are the journals that we use hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a distribution function, so okay, proper distribution, blah blah. We'll just study it. Don't worry, life is very beautiful. Hmm. And mathematics is beautiful, more beautiful. 
and physics is the most beautiful okay remember this whenever you find some person of other subject tell them so i have told us that uh, physics is the most beautiful subject well keep it for now well, what are the journals that is this laser and particle beam is from cambridge it is also from laser and particle beam it is an indian journal from csir niskia we love our indian journals and we should publish in our indian journals indian journal of pure and applied physics is a very good journal very good journal and uh, it's published by niskia okay in delhi you will find that uh, near pusa road over there close to rajindranagar there is their office uh, iri indian agricultural research institute uske bagal mein hai okay astrophysics and space science this journal is by springer you know springer is a german company i hope german company springer verlag mm -hmm. and let me introduce this is me one of my co guys professor paul and this is vasudev ghosh my guide and right now my teacher my guide and uh, right now we are collaborators and uh, you know here you have written so many books by professor vasudev ghosh mm. as for the calcutta university students and students from badwan and other parts you have read that uh, practical book optics electronics and sir is our guide and this one is my first paper okay how long back 2011 i sent it in 2010 yeah it was in 2010 so as for now i have taught you the different this is a equation what is this equation as i have said fermi gas pressure okay now what is this pressure just recapitulating once more this is a relativistic degeneration pressure given by s chandra sir you know what is his uh, book in which he has put here well, well let me tell you chandrasekhar chandrasekhar an introduction to the study of stellar structure university of chicago press 1939 hmm. and there are some other people who worked on it fowler uh, eddington these are the great great people who have just and uh, we are also doing out here well thank you thank you for your time patience good day